Welcome back to What Was That? I'm Gabe Sanchez. Donald Trump's campaign and the GOP have spent all of their time portraying President Biden as being in cognitive decline, if not outright senile, and now they've realized they've made a huge mistake. I watched him with Paul Ryan, and he destroyed Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan with the water. He was chugging water at a left and right. I didn't think a human being would be able to drink so much water at one time. And he beat Paul Ryan. So I, I'm not underestimating him. I assume he's going to be uh, somebody that will be a worthy debater. That's in the All In podcast. I mean, it's interesting, though, for how they talk about Biden. He's now talking him up, saying he's a strong debater. And, and I was told that this was where he and his team were heading uh, as they went into the debate. They were trying to move from, you know, Biden can't tie his shoelaces and is going to trip his way all over the stage to trying to suggest that they expect that he will be good in the same way he was, say, at the State of the Union uh, several months ago. And so there is an awareness in Trump's world that they have lowered the expectations pretty solidly for Biden. I don't know that, you know, a week out from the debate is enough time to try to recast that. but. Trump did not help himself, you know, in, in 2020 when he was constantly interrupting Biden. He knows that. He has said that to people. Um, Trump is Trump and his folks are aware that they set the expectations too low for Biden and Biden beat them. They're trying to avoid doing that now. Also, I got to ask, does Trump not remember debating Biden back in 2020? Because if that's the case, Trump's memory might be worse than we thought. He doesn't even know what the word inflation means. I don't think if you gave him a quiz. I think you should take a cognitive test like I did. I took a cognitive test and I aced it. Doc Ronnie, Doc Ronnie Johnson. Does everyone know Ronnie Johnson? Calling your opponent senile when you can't even remember the name of the doctor that administered your cognitive test that you supposedly aced is a bad idea. In case you're wondering who Trump is talking about, it's Ronnie Jackson not Ronnie Johnson. Ronnie Johnson is a Norwegian former soccer player. Anyway, Donald Trump has tried to portray President Biden as a puppet being controlled by Obama in the deep state. I sarcastically insert the name Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, for Biden as an indication that others may actually be having a very big influence on running our country, which is what I'm saying. Ron DeSanctimonious and his failing campaign apparatus together with the Democrats radical left disinformation machine, which is a big one. They go wild saying, oh, Trump doesn't know who the president of the United States is. He must be cognitively impaired like Joe Biden is. No, I know both names very well. Never mix them up and know that they are destroying our country. Also, and as reported, I just took a cognitive test as part of my physical exam and I aced it. Oh, Trump is saying that he did that on purpose? Wow. Trump has also claimed that President Biden can't put two sentences together. He can't put two sentences together and he's in charge of nuclear warfare. Oh my, I mean, they're not doing well. They're not being treated and they are, they are right now. Well, that's weird because I seem to remember Donald Trump struggling with words before he allegedly soiled himself on stage. Heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will repeat do oh. Many people are saying it. Trump soils himself the best. He soils himself better than anyone else. I mean, even his supporters are wearing diapers for Donald. I wish I was making this up. MAGA is literally wearing diapers in defense of Trump's incontinence. So whatever you do, do not call Trump Donald Von Shits and Pants. I'm being serious. He doesn't like it. So out of respect, do not call him Donald Von Shits and Pants. Instead of focusing on policies, Trump has centered his campaign around revenge being a dictator and Biden being a senile old fool. And now Republicans are desperately scrambling to change the narrative ahead of the first presidential debate. Just listen to bootleg Anderson Cooper, Trey Gowdy. Let's start with the debate expectations. I mean, is the right, are Republicans in trouble because they've you know, spent a lot of time in recent weeks talking about how President Biden can't find his way off the stage. And we saw what happened at the State of the Union when he came in stronger than expected and there was a ton of praise for him. Yeah, they got to be very careful. I mean, I, I don't know why Republicans fall into this trap of setting high expectations. I mean, it, they, they, this, is, this debate, Shannon, to me is fascinating because it's a combination of agenda and acuity. It's content and cognition. So the viewers will be watching both, not only what you say, but are you fit for office? So I don't recall a debate in my lifetime where both of those issues were front and center for both of the candidates. 
not just what you say, but I mean, can you remember which day of the week it is? That's going to be an issue. Trump's current tactic is to say that President Biden will use cocaine for the debate. Joe Biden doesn't have a clue. Now we're going to watch. Is anybody going to watch the debate? He's going to be so pumped up. He's going to be pumped up. You know all that stuff that was missing about a month ago from the White House? What happened? Somebody didn't pick up hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of cocaine. I wonder who that could have been. I don't know. Actually, I think it was Joe. Hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of cocaine? 0 .007 ounces of cocaine was found, which, by the way, is what a single raindrop weighs. Look, I don't know where Trump and Don Jr. buy their cocaine. I don't snort all cocaine! But I don't know anything that weighs 0 .007 ounces and costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Also, a month ago, you mean the small amount of cocaine that was found in July of 2023 as in 11 months ago? Now, if Trump's team really cared about improving his health, they would take the necessary steps. They might even start with his metabolic health by using today's sponsor, Lumen. Lumen is the world's first handheld metabolic coach. It's a device that measures your metabolism through your breath. And on the app, it lets you know if you're burning fat or carbs and gives you tailored guidance to improve your nutrition, workout, sleep, and even stress management. And all you have to do is breathe into your Lumen first thing in the morning and you'll know what's going on with your metabolism, whether you're burning mostly fats or carbs. Then Lumen gives you a personalized nutrition plan for that day based on your measurements. You can also breathe into it before and after workouts and meals so you know exactly what's going on in your body in real time. And Lumen will give you tips to keep you on top of your health game. Your metabolism is your body's engine. It's how your body turns the food you eat into the fuel that keeps you going. Because your metabolism is at the center of everything your body does, optimal metabolic health translates to a bunch of benefits, including easier weight management, improved energy levels, better fitness results, better sleep, etc. I love how Lumen gives you recommendations to improve your metabolic health. It can also track your cycle as well as the onset of menopause and adjust your recommendations to keep your metabolism healthy through hormones hormonal shifts so you can keep up your energy and stave off cravings. So if you want to take the next step in improving your health, go to lumen.me slash Gabe to get 15% off your Lumen. That's L-U-M-E-N dot me slash Gabe for 15% off your purchase. Thank you, Lumen, for sponsoring this episode. Seriously, at this rate, someone might want to give Donald Trump a cognitive test. Why not have What's-His-Face do it, uh, uh, Ronnie, uh, James, no, uh, J Jason, no, uh, nah, you know what, let's just ask Trump. Does everyone know Ronnie Johnson? Never mind, he still doesn't know the name of his own doctor. Speaking of Trump's drunk doctor, Ronnie Jackson is also pushing this Biden is on drugs narrative. What sort of cocktail uh, you know, could they put together for him in this debate? I mean, how does that work? I, I assume that exists. I'm not a, I'm not a doctor, but it doesn't seem like that would be uh, too hard to pull off. And it also doesn't seem like the Democrats wouldn't be totally willing to do that to get you know artificial results. It, it seems like it'd actually be exactly what they would do. You know, there's the amphetamine type drugs like Adderall and things of that nature, and then there's things like Provigil. Uh, you know, they're also just increase your alertness and stuff. So I think they're probably trying to find just the right mix of stuff that can, you know, that can wake him up and make him a little bit more alert and a little bit more with it. Well, this is Rich coming from Ronnie Jackson when you remember that this guy was prescribing those very same drugs while in the White House under Trump. Hydrocodone, fentanyl, morphine, ketamine, and a ton of sedatives. Ronnie Jackson was handing out so many drugs that people gave him the nickname the Candy Man. Remember, every accusation from the GOP is actually a confession. Donald Trump and his team are desperately trying to come up with excuses as to why he will lose in the debates. He's going to be so jacked up for those debates you watch. And let's not forget, Donald Trump already tried this strategy back in 2020. There's probably, uh, possibly drugs involved. That's what I hear. I mean, there's possibly drugs. I don't know how you can go from being so bad where you can't even get out of sense. I mean, you saw some of those debates with the large number of people on the stage. He was, I mean, I, I used to say, how is it possible that he can even go forward? And because Trump and his base lack any creativity, they are doing it again. Tonight, America saw, um, let's say, a very different Joe Biden. I might call him 
jacked up Joe. I want to know when he gets his physical done, what medications is he actually on? Because he looks sometimes like he's really jacked up on something. Joe Biden must have been jacked up on something. He's jacked up. They jacked him up. He'll be jacked up. They're going to need to goose him and juice him. I'm going to demand a drug test. I don't want him coming in like the State of the Union. He was high as a cow. MAGA is afraid of President Biden and his accomplishments, especially when you stack them up against Trump's lackluster four years in office. So now, Trump and his team are desperately scrambling to say that President Biden is on performance-enhancing drugs so that his followers don't see Trump for what he actually has become, a pathetic old man suffering from cognitive decline and poor mental health. But the other thing that I think is really interesting, because I really got to know Donald Trump post-presidency, and I got to see what he was like. And over the weekend, he was talking about how Joe Biden needs to take a cognitive test. Joe Biden, you know, isn't all there. Donald Trump had severe memory issues. As the journalist who spent the most time with him, I have to say he couldn't remember things. He couldn't even remember me. We spent an hour together in 2021 in May, and then a few months later, I went back to the White House. To the, uh, I went back to Trump Tower to talk to him about his time in the White House, and he had. I said he, you know, he had this vacant look on his face, and I said, "Do you remember me?" And he said, "No." He had no recollection of our lengthy interview that we had, and he wasn't doing a lot of interviews at that time. So I think that the American public really needs to see this portrait of Donald Trump because this shows what he is like and who he is and who he has always been. Well, that's all for me today. Thanks so much for watching and feel free to follow me at I am Gabe Sanchez. What was that is made possible by viewers like you. And if you'd like to support the show and help us grow, you can contribute to my personal Patreon at patreon.com slash I am Gabe Sanchez. Thank you for your support. So until next episode, I'm Gabe Sanchez and this has been What Was That?